Senator Crapel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Chairman Bernanke. I want to follow up on the Volcker rule. I read with uh, interest your comments yesterday, and frankly, candid comments, that the regulators will not be ready to issue the rule by the uh, deadline of July, uh, which uh, I think is uh, becoming more and more self-evident. I assume the reason for that is that because you have 17,000 comments, you have the issues that were just raised by uh, Senator Reid with regard to the reaction of uh, other markets in the world with, to what we may do with that rule, and the need to conduct a cost-benefit analysis uh, is just likely not to happen by the time we hit the statutory deadline in July. Is that correct? Yes, and in addition, it's a multi it's a multi-agency rule, and that requires uh, coordination. But I, I do want to say that, of course, we will be working as quickly and as effectively as we, as we can to get it done. Well, and I appreciate that. The, the question I have is, uh, as I read the statute, uh, there's a deadline in July for the agencies to act, but if the agencies don't act, the rule, whatever it is, goes into effect. And uh, the market participants are understandably, I believe, concerned about what they should do on July 21st if the agencies have not been able to coordinate effectively and promulgate a rule. Uh, the, the question I have to you is, wouldn't it be helpful if Congress were to correct that aspect of the statute and make it clear that on July 21st, we are not going to have a vocal ru Volcker rule go into effect that does not have the clarification and uh, cost-benefit analysis and fine-tuning that the agencies are now trying to give it? Well, Senator, we certainly don't expect people to obey a rule that doesn't exist. Uh, there is a two-year conformance period built into the statute that allows two years from, the pro from July of this year before, that they before they have to conform to the rule, and um, uh, we will certainly make sure that, that firms have all the time they need to, to respond. And, and I think two years will probably be adequate in that respect. Well, thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to shift during the remainder of my questions to a, the topic of a question that the chairman asked you about whether it is time for us to begin more aggressively controlling the spend out rate in Congress's spending habits or uh, whether we need to continue to hold off because of, of the impact on the economy. And I believe as, as I understood your response, you indicated that in January we're going to see tax relief or tax cuts expire and we're going to see uh, the sequestration impact. A number of other things will happen. And I believe your answer was that soon we need to take some action. Uh, and I want to pursue that with you a little more And in this context. Uh, we've been having this debate in Congress now for a number of years. Uh, but I want to go back to the Bull Simpson Commission, which uh, issued its report uh, two plus years ago now. Mm -hmm. And in, in that report, uh, it was recognized that there needed to be a, a, an easing into the aggressive control of spending in Washington. And uh, immediately following that, uh, we had the deb debate over the $800 billion stimulus bill where the argument was made, you know, it's not time to control federal spending yet. Um, we, we need another year or two before we start getting into the serious control of spending. And between then and now, we have basically put about another $5 trillion on the national debt, not to count the trillions of dollars that have been uh, used to help sustain economic activity, uh, whether we agree with them or not from the, the Fed's actions. And uh, we still see uh, the argument being made that it's not time yet for us to become aggressively engaged in controlling the spending excesses in Washington, even though we have over uh, 40 cents of every dollar borrowed today. And the budgets that are being proposed uh, continue that trend for the next decade. I know you don't get heavily engaged in fiscal policy, but you've already tiptoed a little bit into those waters. And I'd like to ask you, when will it be time? I, I believe it's past time. Mm -hmm. But when will it be time, if it's not time now, for us to start aggressively dealing with the fiscal structure of our country on the spending side of the equation? Uh, just a word on the Fed. The Fed's purchases of securities actually reduce the deficit because of the interest that comes back to the Treasury. Um, the two things are not incompatible. Uh, you know, you can. Uh, moderate the n very near-term impact at the same time that you make strong and decisive actions to put us on a path. I mean, you haven't you haven't done you haven't taken the actions you haven't you haven't passed the laws that will uh, bring us on a glide path into sustainability over the next decade or so. And I would add that 
Um, one, I think one concern there is that the, as I mentioned yesterday, is that the 10-year budget window may artificially constrain some of the things that Congress should be thinking about because many of the issues that we face in terms not only of entitlements but other issues as well are, are, are multi-decade issues. And I think you could take strong actions um, that would be taking place over time. I, I think about the, uh, the early 80s Social Security reform that phased in a whole bunch of things, including the later retirement age, which is still happening today, 30 years later. Um, so you could take those actions, lock them in, you could get the benefit of the confidence there, but it wouldn't have necessarily quite as big an impact as the very big shock that would otherwise occur um, uh, next January 1st. I'm not saying that you can't do it and take serious action. I just think you should uh, balance those objectives. Well, thank you. I, I take it that you're saying that uh, we need to adopt a long-term plan to deal with this crisis. Absolutely. Uh, and I would just observe that uh, at this point, the budgets that are being proposed uh, simply go the other direction. We still, other than some of the others, like the Bull Simpson Commission and, and others, we still haven't got proposals on the table here in Congress to deal with that long-term plan, and I personally think it's time we get at it. 